All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will call the meeting to order today for May 3rd, 2020, 2022. And resolve that the agenda for May 3rd, 2022, regular council meeting be adopted. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Bobick. All those in favor? It is carried. Confirmation of the minutes. Result of the minutes from the April 26, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. All those in favor? It is carried. Moving on down to um, Director of Public Works Report. You can see that attachment there, Mr. Harvey. Uh, yeah, so we had a council meeting last week, so it's not quite as long this week, but uh, just in contact with Manitoba Water Services Board, <coughs> the contract uh, is ready for the uh, generator, so that one can be moving forward, and uh, we're just finishing up the PLC project, just uh, <coughs> some issues with uh, delays on the alarm, just kind of fine tuning those. Wrapping that one up. And then uh, <clears throat> we had a uh, loader demonstration, so there'll be a loader decision paper on this council meeting. And uh, the mechanic and I went down and checked out uh, several of the loaders that we received tenders for. And then for uh, public works, they're out sweeping streets and sweeping boulevards and uh, doing some landscaping out at the cemetery and some sewer flushing. Need Thank you. A seconder. Okay, thanks. Do I have a seven more? Resolve that the director of public works, oh, okay, sorry, there it is. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Resolve that the director of public works report be received, moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Sorry, I jumped the gun there. Any questions for Mr. Harvey? Mr. Councillor Delorier. Um, the, the river, are we, is there any concern or any areas of town that need to be concerned? I notice it's, it's high. I don't know if it's any higher than any, nor, any other year, but um, so I know there's lots of snow still to come down over the mountains, so. Yeah, we're just kind of keeping an eye on it. So far, it's all right, and uh, most of the ice is off it now kind of thing. So that uh, aspect uh, is minimal at this point, but we're just kind of keeping an eye on it. And then once the mountains start melting and you know, if we get a big rainstorm, we'll keep an eye for sure. Okay, is there any, any residents that are requesting sandbags or concerned or? Uh, not at this point, no. no. Okay. Chief Vidorchuk, did you want to jump in there and explain the, the just the levels upstream? Yeah, I took a tour today. Uh, both Lobstick, Lobstick and Hay Creeks are down to nothing. Those are our two main feeders. Um, and we really don't have to worry about mount, snow from the mountains. It doesn't really affect us that much. Thank you, Mr. Fedorchuk. Councillor White? At the risk of uh, being repetitive, I think I, anyway, and others have asked uh, relative to the thoughts rel relative to having a mock tabletop disaster plan where we could go over things like our possible flooding, fire, spill of whatever, and I'm not aware of that happening and it's beginning to concern me. Mr. Poole? Our safety officer is to be hired in, in June, so once he's on, that is definitely one of the priorities of that position that he'll have to carry through, but we do not have a person in the position yeah, I appreciate that, and I think that's important, and thank you for confirming that. But it's a month of May that's concerning me, and I have all due respect for you, sir, that you can do the same, or Chief Fedorchuk. Uh, somehow waiting for that guy to arrive is, it concerns me, but I worry a lot. But I'd rather be safe than sorry. Uh, Mr. Harvey. <clears throat> yeah, and we have been uh, keeping track of the flood updates, uh, like all throughout the winter and uh, they were low for this area based on we had a lot of snow but there wasn't much water content in the snow because it fell when it was cold but we have been monitoring uh, those flood updates and they were calling for flooding in the south but not in our region 
Council or white uh, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's some sort of law that suggests municipal entities have to do mock disasters relatively regularly. And if we haven't been doing it, I would be concerned. Yeah, that's correct. That's true? Yes. Okay, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Councillor White. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. All right, moving on to council and CAO reports. Um, CAO Poole, would you like to start off tonight? Yes, I have a, a written report for council. There's, uh, there's a lot of irons in the fire, as you can see, but uh, we have completed a lot of what we wanted to this spring. Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, thank you to CFO Ganita uh, for presenting the budget and Uriah Waldner for assisting with the uh, presentation and Director Harvey for dealing with the fires in the office of as, when I was gone for the past three weeks. Other than that, yeah, if there's any questions on my uh, written report, I can take any. All right. Um, everyone can see CAO Poole's report there. Thank you very much, Mr. Poole. And uh, team, you can continue to have a look at that. Um, but we will carry on with other uh, council reports, starting with um, Councillor White today. Yes, sir. Uh, no, That's you. you. Uh, so, some of the half dozen that have attended uh, April 28th went to the business consortium meeting. Uh, a lot of uh, strategies for helping people who have mental uh, disorders difficulties to deal with and I think that's really important to deal with, especially with COVID and some chatter about SHARP and more importantly we're looking at working together with the, the town council for example, the business consortium, the chamber of commerce, working for the community as a whole to solve a, a myriad of issues that we have so I appreciate that what you're doing. Then I met with the Minister of Highways as, as did council as a whole, Doyle Panuk and MLA Wojcik, looking at the options relative to the roundabout and the left-handed uh, left turn signal, which was interesting when I, I read some of the comments and uh, it's something I think we're going to take back to the public to have more input and, and more debate both ways. On the 29th, uh, I attended the Hero Club uh, barbecue. I just want to publicly thank all the volunteers who worked to make that activity happen, uh, to help people in need again. Uh, without the volunteers, it wouldn't happen and it's appreciated. The 30th, I went to uh, the Bozeman's Lions dinner, and I'm led to believe, if the numbers are accurate, they raised an excess of $16,000 to go to the Ukrainian community through their connections in uh, the Red Cross and or the Lions. So, uh, bouquets to the Bozeman uh, Lions Club, and, and thanks to our, our council for supplying a grant <coughs> to, to waive that uh, rental. So, we did that. Uh, May the 2nd, I guess that was yesterday, Swan Valley West, we met and talked about shared services. It was quite amicable, they had good questions both ways and we'll wait to hear back from them. And then we had our G4 meeting, we talked about many issues, the one that's near to me is the, uh, the possibility of sending money to the Ukraine. Uh, it was passed unanimously by those present to send some cash uh, to help specifically Ukrainian people who come to the town of Swan River. It wouldn't leave the valley, it would stay right here. As a consequence of that, I reached out to Settlement Services and asked them for a template and what they might need money for and get back that to me, back, that back to me and I will then share it with our G4 members and uh, hopefully we'll make some progress there. But uh, unanimous in support to help these people in, in such dire need. I want to thank uh, Councillor Bobak for bringing up a really good point at the, at the meeting. It's nice to see all, all the G4 working together on many issues, not just this one, but th this one is one where we all 100% agreed and it's a compliment to the whole G4 to work together and I thank you, Councillor Bobbick, for making that happen. And, and it was also brought out that the cemeteries had a half a dozen, four or five people volunteering to work, volunteering to work at, at that location and I'm sure uh, CEO Poole is in the process of dropping them a note to thank them, uh, maybe even, uh, whatever, dinner for two gift certificate, people to volunteer in that world are so important. 
at the risk of finally getting fined, Swan Valley Sport Fish is hosting their uh, 30th annual dinner. It'll, it'll be a drive through again this Saturday, May the 7th. Our numbers are really down, and I think around two, 250, and we've ordered fish for 500, so I'm imagining that the, the boxes of fish will be fairly healthy. I hope they are. So if you can see yourself into that from 5 to 7 p.m. at the arena, you should buy your tickets in advance from Work World or Williams Auto Electric or Quick Stop. And it's a drive through as I mentioned. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. Councillor Morio. Um, basically, the same things that uh, Councillor White and others attended was the uh, meeting with the MTI Minister Doyle regarding the uh, 83 and 10 intersection. Um, I guess that's going back to the drawing board now for further study. And last night, the uh, meeting with uh, Swan Valley West regarding our shared services uh, budget consultation that we had agreed to with them and the, the following G4 meeting um, where we talked about uh, rise and the Ukraine um, issue and how the Valley can support them coming here. And then the, a question to administration or whatever, do we know anything about a van that's been moving around town with the logo community connections on it that I've been seeing around drive down today and I just saw it again here. It's 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 almost like a good or bad or I think it's a good van a good van, like it's a like a, a reach out type van to okay. stuff like that is what I gather, but uh, it has a big logo on it says community connections. And it's got like different Twitter and Facebook type stuff, but it's... So if you could I can inquire. Please, thanks. And that's all I got. Thank you, Councillor. Go Just ahead, Councillor White. Uh, what was also talked about <coughs> before was uh, including some other uh, some of our other partners, now that we're meeting uh, live meetings again, specifically our First Nation communities and the uh, Swan Valley School Division. So I talked to Reed Galloway about that today. So he's going to look at the agenda, see if it's appropriate or not appropriate, whatever that means. Thank you, sir. Councillor uh, Bobick, with your report, please. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Wontoni. Uh, same thing, I went to the meeting with the uh, Minister of Highways there. It was uh, very interesting, uh, very well received, I do believe, from uh, Council and their offices. I was uh, uh, impressed with their, how genuine they were with our concerns. So. Uh, the G4 meeting, one of the things that stood out for me was also the, the Ukrainian uh, dilemma that's going on over there and how everybody was just stepping up to the plate, but also uh, some of the comments that uh, all the G4 uh, know that we disagree and we learn to agree to disagree. So I, I really enjoyed that comment. Uh, just uh, speaking with Public Works, uh, the foreman that say the mechanic at the shop was uh, informing me that we have a couple young gentlemen taking our class three learners for the truck which is very kudos to them so hopefully they will continue on because you can't have too many with that class license so I'll speak a little bit more about when the loader comes up but that's it for me thank you thank you councillor Bobbick councillor White you had a comment it, uh, Jeepers, I keep my mind. One of the items on the uh, virtual auction that Swan Valley Sport Fish has put in, it's a, uh, I think it's a bronze grizzly bear, it's about this big. All funds from that particular object go to the, uh, the Ukrainian need. So uh, if you want to bid on one thing, bid on that thing, because those monies will all go directly. I think we're going to give them to the Bozeman Lions and they'll direct where they want that money to go to. Thank you for that, Councillor White. Councillor Friesen. Um, I also attended the G4 last night. Supper was great. Um, all I did was eat. Uh, I went to the, the Ukrainian supper and had uh, rogies and sausage. It was delightful. Uh, also the hero barbecue. So that's all I did was eat all week. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Delorier. Um, and first of all, the Community Connection Van, that's a PMH van. Does like uh, sexual health outreach or uh, oh, drug yeah. outreach? Like harm or yeah. yeah. It, I think it's based out of Brandon. Um, the highways meeting. Um, I, I guess it was a case of 
reminded me some of some other meetings we had with some ministers many years ago. We went in, guns ready to for what we wanted. We come out completely opposite, so to speak. But uh, you know, we, we went in on a last ditch effort to just get a simple turning light. I'm sure all of us have been asked by by constituents, why can't we just have a turning light? No different than at the extra foods in the paw. No different than countless ones in Dauphin where it's just a turning light. And I guess. For those watching at home, the options we're being given don't include a turning light and the province is pretty adamant. It's either a roundabout or it's a turning light with concrete medians. Both, I guess, uh, would present challenges to large equipment, agricultural equipment, logging equipment, trucks. Um, we're hoping to have a uh, community consultation on what our options are and how to move forward because we're kind of we're kind of at a loggerheads as far as putting medians there that don't allow left turns that that you know kind of box you in into the intersection is not is not any better than a roundabout so neither option is probably uh, is probably what the public wants so that's why we're going to have a uh, education piece to try and um, allay some of the concerns so that'll be coming up. Uh, Hopefully, sometime later on this spring, early summer. I don't know if we've had any more discussion with them on, on possible dates, but that would be. Uh, I guess we have to pass a resolution tonight to uh, get that ball rolling. Um, then I also attended the uh, G4 meeting last night. Uh, where one of the main items for discussion is how to re revive the economic development, and we don't have the best track record of working together as municipalities when it comes to economic development. So we're hoping to have a, a panel of, of uh, movers and shakers in the community, I guess, give us some direction on that. Um, so that, that'll that be coming up as well. Other than that, uh, that's it for me. Thank you, Councillor Delorier. Could I ask Freed. you a question? Absolutely. Yeah. The difference between a traffic circle and a roundabout. Same thing. No, they're not. I've seen pictures of traffic circles and they're huge, whereas a roundabout is not. So did anybody ask if we could have a well, traffic what, circle? What they're proposing to build is 30 meter, 30 meter radius. Yeah, it's designed for logging trucks for to go around it. Okay, yeah. thanks. Thank you, Councillor Bobak and then Mr. Poole. Just to make note of that roundabout still has the boulevards in it. It's, you, you don't eliminate those by going to a roundabout. They're still in that design too. But the, they're not as far back. Exactly. But so you're still, still able to make the left hand yeah, turn. But they're still there. Yeah. Mr. Poole. Just to add to my report, I did uh, put a letter of support to Manova Corp. If Council's had a chance to read it and is okay with it going out, I will send it out. So if you take a look there, you'll see that letter of support. I'll let uh, you continue to read that and offer some feedback. Uh, I will just quickly touch base as well uh, with my report and uh, for the minister's meeting for MTI. I just wanted to congratulate and thank our council for being a part of it, for being so professional and uh, uh, coming out with something that we perhaps didn't go in with. However, I think uh, that we need to consider safety um, and economic development when we consider a roundabout or this or the turning light with the barricades. And uh, looking towards that, it's we need to ensure that we're looking at the future, not just today. So things like this, we must take into account when we make that decision of long-term uh, safety and long-term economic development growth within the community. Um, thank you again to our our team, our council at uh, G4 with the shared services meetings. Thank you for council. You are a professional bunch. You are uh, uh, leaders in the uh, um, council industry, so to speak, of our communities and thank you so much for the grace and the tact that you have for the town of Swan River as we have those meetings. 
uh, just kudos again to the Lions Club for a great uh, Ukrainian supper that they uh, did host with funds going to uh, the Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian uh, situation that is happening. So thank you for that. Other than that, I don't have anything else from myself. Uh, we'll ask uh, Mr. Brennan Fedorchuk if you have anything to add right now or anything to share. Uh, for recreation, um, the ice is out in the arena. Uh, we'd like to thank the renters that made uh, made April possible. Um, Kinsman Club put on a great tournament last weekend, as well as the Friendship Center adding programming and uh, Dallas Anderson as well, among other among others. Um, swimming lessons, Tuesday Thursday swimming lesson sets are now are now starting up. Um, so we, we're happy to get the pool back open and going and. Baseball and the outdoor activities are starting as well. So um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Fedorchuk. Councillor Deloria, a question? Yeah, a question for Mr. Fedorchuk. Um, you know, this April was kind of a, a trial month with, with the proposal we had last, last fall or last summer um, to extend our, our ice, ice hours in the spring and fall. Would you be able to provide the council with a report? You know, no rush or anything, but a report on how, how it went, you know, was. Uh, you know, maybe some brief numbers on what it what it cost extra to keep that ice in for the month versus what we what rental was was, you know, was it worth it? I guess is basically what what uh, we'd be looking for or what I'd be looking for. Yeah, I can do that for sure. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor Delory. Thank you, Mr. Fedorchuk. Fire Chief Fedorchuk, any comments? Anything to report on to, for today, sir? Um. April's been a busy month for us. Um, we've had 10 calls uh, that month uh, with two structure fires at the end of the month. Uh, and our Facebook page is up and running and seems to be doing pretty well. So. Excellent, thank you, sir. Yes, that Facebook page uh, is getting traction and thank you to you and your team for all the efforts that you, that you uh, take in our community. We all appreciate that. CFO Ganita, any anything to share with us today, sir? Uh, there are several resolutions uh, later on on the agenda. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, just finishing that up. Letter of support for Minova Corp. Uh, that uh, CAO Pool was talking about. Any questions, comments, or are we satisfied with that, Council? Just a, Councillor from, White. From a technical perspective, uh, one, I support the letters. It's well written. Thank you for that. It's got everything. Did you mention water? I read it, but I forgot. I did. Uh, water was a big deal to them, availability of water. Competitive utilities. Uh, this, when, when, I, when I did my homework and got ready for the meeting, that wasn't there, but now it's here. I, I, I beefed it up again. How do we know when things come, that new things are added? There's any a ding comes on my iPad saying, hey, you got something added to your agenda? So unless no. you check it like right now, you don't spot that there's something new there. Yeah, we we try to get everything done by mid yeah. Monday at noon. Yeah. Like this letter, I didn't, you know, I just didn't get it up until today. But uh, mm -hmm. we do try as a deadline to keep it Monday at noon, yeah. so council isn't surprised. Well, welcome to the real world. Uh, thank you. That letter's well written. Uh, with uh, no other comments, uh, CAO Pool, thank you very much for your efforts. We appreciate it, and we understand the tight deadlines and the expectations. So no, uh, no apology necessary for. You don't uh, have water in there. Uh, just competitive utilities. I can specifically add water in there. Yeah, because water was a big deal to them. Yeah. I think I, I put that sentence in there somehow. Thank you, Councillor White. All right, moving on to new business 8.1. <clears throat> Whereas the longest day of smiles encourages community ambassadors to raise awareness and funds to help a child born with a cleft condition smile and change his or her li his or her life when free, safe cleft surgery and comprehensive care. And whereas Operation Smile Canada is a volunteer delivered global media medical rather charity that exists to ensure everyone has access to safe, effective surgery that they need 
wherever they live in the world. Therefore, be it re resolved that the town of Swan River proclaim June 19th, 2022 as the longest day of smiles in Swan River, Manitoba. Be it further resolved that the town of Swan River Council challenge other Manitoba communities to do the same. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Uh, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Is carried. <coughs> 8.2 Resolved that the town of Swan River purchase a Komatsu WA270 8 rubber tire loader from SMS equipment for $161,667.77 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Bobic, second by Councillor Morio. You will see the decision paper below that discussion. Mr. Harvey, would you like to uh, just yeah. go through the decision paper for uh, us, yeah. please? So we uh, put out a uh, loader RFQ because the current loader is coming to the end of its warranty period this year. And uh, the loader is one of our core units that uh, we use it throughout the winter for clearing snow and for loading sand, salt for the doing the streets. And then uh, we use it in the summer for construction projects, for loading dump trucks and moving soil around. And uh, also for backfilling for excavation work. And uh, so we sent out an RFQ and posted on Merck's. <coughs> and uh, we received quotations from Brandt, SMS equipment, high track, Mazer, and right side. And uh, the right side one didn't meet the minimum specifications, but all the other ones did. And then we arranged for demonstrations of the loaders. Uh, so the mechanic and I went down and looked at them and uh, looked for accessibility within the engine for oil filters and uh, hydraulic filters and all that for changing uh, those out. And then uh, in the cab looking for uh, you know visibility because we're always working on busy streets so make sure guys uh, can see out and then just the overall comfort and uh, the controls for the loaders and then uh, so table one there's points assigned for specifications reference resale demonstrations and total price and uh, so if you look there the Komatsu has the highest number of total points and then if you look down at table two, it's uh, the list, or it's the uh, cost. So it has the warranty, and then uh, what they quoted, and then you subtract off the trade-in allowance, to get the, and then at the bottom is the total price with the warranty. And the Komatsu was the lowest, so it had the most points based on specifications, reference and resales, the demonstration, and the total price. And it is also the cheapest, it's slightly below two of the other ones. And uh, so based on that, I recommend council choose the Komatsu as the loader for the town of Swan River. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. And can you also confirm that this was um, approved in the financial plan as well? That's correct, yeah. Thank you. Any discussion, Councillor Bobick? Uh, just uh, being involved with some of the with some, on some of the loader here. Uh, just to let you know that loader in the lifetime of the town of Swan River uh, had about 6,000 hours on it. So with the price that's being put forward here, it works out to about $27 an hour of every time you use that. That doesn't include man, fuel, or wear and tear, which is actually a really, that's a pretty strong figure for what you're getting. You're getting high trade-in values, so that's kudos for the town. Also, uh, we have to remember that in the first part of the tender, there was talk of a skeleton bucket for doing riprap and for counterweights, those were taken off because we will be using the grizzly from the watershed at no cost to the town of Swan River, just for storage, that's all it'll be. And we will be looking at calcium for the rear tires instead of counterweights. Uh, talking with Mike and Mr. Harvey here, uh, that we will try the loader prior to uh, putting that calcium. I, I really don't know what the 
cost penalty, but it'll be a lot cheaper than counter weight. So. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Councillor White. What's a grizzly? What's a grizzly? You dump rocks over it, big rocks go one way, and the small rocks go through. Okay. It's a very big, very beefy sieve. A filter. More or less. Huge. Yeah. Size of this room. Any further discussion? All those in favor? It is carried. 9.1. Whereas the replacement of pumper one with all required equipment will be financed by borrowing. And whereas fire protection service is provided to all properties within the town of Swan River, regardless of liability for property tax. And whereas borrowing for a local improvement allows a municipality to set a mill rate each year for the annual debenture payment that applies to all benefiting properties, including those exempt from general municipal taxes. And whereas subsection 311B of the Municipal Act states, if approved by bylaw, a municipality may undertake as a local improvement for the benefit of all or part of the municipality and other project, and other project the cost of which includes a capital component. Therefore, be it resolved that the fire chief that the chief, pardon me, therefore be it resolved that the chief financial officer be instructed to begin the process of preparing a local improvement plan for the capital project replacement of pumper one with all required equipment for the town of Swan River Fire Department. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Bobic. Discussion. Uh, you will see um, all the information below as well. If you didn't, please take a look. Um, Fire Chief Fedorchuk, any any comments on this one, sir? Uh, nothing other than I've stated in the past. Thank you. I'll call a, all those. Uh, sorry, any further discussion? Councillor Bobbick? Just if we could go through it again, just to, to explain to the ratepayers why this needs to be done and the, the whole story behind the, the decision on this. So I would imagine Sergeant Chief Fedorchuk would be the best at doing that, if, if you wouldn't mind. Um, if we're to keep our department up to our current NFPA standards, uh, standards have the lifetime of a fire truck at 25 years. Uh, we are currently past that. So as part of our uh, uh, planned replacement process that was set up in 2009 by Chief LeBlanc, uh, the timeline hits right now. Um, after 30 years, a truck is considered uh, non-usable as a frontline fire apparatus. Uh, there's currently an 18 month to two year build build time so it'd be 2023 late 2023 2024 before the truck arrives um and with the if we wait any more time average costs increase between six and ten percent so you're looking at uh 60 to ninety thousand dollars a year increase per year that we wait thank you thank you fire chief Fedorchuk. further discussion all those in favor it is carried. 9.2. Whereas, after the meeting with Manitoba Transportation and Infrastructure, MTI, regarding the intersection at Highway 10 and 83, it was apparent that MTI would not proceed with the option of turning signals without concrete medians. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Swan River requests that MTI hold an in-person public consultation regarding the roundabout option. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Mr. Harvey? Yeah, so I put this on the uh, council meeting because as council, uh, council alluded to during that meeting, uh, the town was pushing hard to just have the turning signals with no concrete medians because uh, that's what our survey showed that the public preferred. But uh, everyone on the MTI side, you know, you could tell that that wasn't really going to be an option that they were going to pursue. Uh, and so therefore, uh, it was discussed during the meeting 
that uh, maybe there could be some more education regarding the roundabout or a public consultation because when this was <coughs> brought up the first time it was in the middle of COVID restrictions and uh, so there was a online survey but they weren't able to have a in-person public consultation where they have an expert on roundabouts that can answer questions that any of the public may have and so uh, Council thought that would be a good idea to have that so that the public can come and ask any questions or express any concerns uh, regarding that and have uh, either an MTI uh, employee or a consultant that's an expert on roundabouts be there to uh, discuss the option and answer any questions that the public has. Councillor Delore. Um, I guess just because uh, you'll probably be in contact with with people at uh, infrastructure I think probably if, if we, if we want to have any success the biggest thing I hear from people who drive trucks is those crazy roundabouts by Regina by Belgoni if if you know if they can get the measurements from those and, and do a comparison and say this will not be like that you know I've heard, I've heard it from multiple people that those ones are too small um, I don't know what too small means but but you know I think if, if, if the point is to educate, that would be one of the concerns brought forward. I can almost guarantee it. So it would probably be good to have some, some defense against that. So, uh, Mr. Harvey? Yeah, I just uh, reached out to the MTI engineer just on a preliminary basis after that meeting. And uh, it was the next day, so they hadn't uh, been informed by uh, the minister uh, that was at the meeting. Um, but I did tell them that I was going to put this on for resolution and uh, I'll get back in contact with them out of this resolution and I'll definitely mention that one as uh, one that the public has expressed concern with. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Councillor Bobbick. Uh, they mentioned that they were going to send a drone up and take a video of a certain intersection. I can't remember the intersection also. Mr. Harvey, go ahead. Yes, they have installed one at Highway 2 and Highway 3, I believe, and uh, the minister did talk about setting up a drone because there is heavy equipment that goes through there and uh, so that you get the top-down view not just seeing cars go through it but actual uh, heavy equipment. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Councillor White. I think uh, I would encourage our uh, viewers to go to the, to the website and, and Google roundabouts and look at different ones in different countries and different makes, models and most of them are really positive. Thank you, Councillor White. Mr. Poole? If they are listening, I know that uh, at the time this was being looked at, Councillor Delory was coming back through Dawson City. Yeah. And that, we, we checked the specs on that one. This, this design is almost identical to the roundabout in Dawson City. And they do have a video of that roundabout, so you can check online and watch the <coughs> It's a the very similar intersection to this. It's same trip the, kind of the radius is very is, is within a meter, I believe. But the, there are large tractor trailers that you can see going through that uh, with ease. Could you forward that link to us and we can share with our, our pals? <coughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Poole. Dawson City. Any Dawson further? Creek. Dawson Creek. Any further uh, discussion? Call the question. All those in favor? It is carried. 9.3. Whereas the municipalities of the Swan Valley have for many years attempted to join together to form a board to focus on further developing the economy of the region, with these efforts taking the form of Swan Valley and Economic Development Corporation, Enterprise Center, and more recently the Swan Valley Regional In Initiative for a Stronger Economy Rise, and whereas many feel outcomes from these efforts could best be described as poor to moderately successful and Swan Valley Rise currently finds itself at a crossroads in terms of long-term funding, staffing and local municipal support. Therefore be it resolved that the Town of Swan River supports a committee of Swan Valley residents be struck to review and report back to the four municipal, municipal councils of the Swan Valley by November 15th, 2022 on the future of municipal municipally involved cooperative-based economic development. 
Further, be it resolved that the Economic Development Review Committee oper operate <coughs> according to the terms of reference attached hereto as Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Discussion? You will see the terms of reference uh, included uh, in, uh, in uh, the agenda under, the, under this resolution. All those in favor? It is carried. Uh, 10.1, resolve that accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment, general account checks numbers 28849 to number 28861, totaling $50,934.69 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5083 to 5090, totaling $91,758.73 as listed on Schedule B. And direct deposits totaling $357.42 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by. Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All those in favor? Is carried. 10.2. Whereas the 2022 capital budget included 23000 for pool, hall, arena, security systems, and whereas the 2022 financial plan included 510 thousand dollars transfer from accumulated surplus of which twenty three thousand dollars was to fund the purchase of said security systems and whereas the pool and hall security systems have been purchased at a cost excluding GST of four thousand six hundred and seventy dollars and fifty five cents and four thousand eight hundred and four dollars and thirty cents respectively totaling nine thousand four hundred and seventy four dollars and eighty five cents Therefore, be it resolved that $9,474.85 transferred from accumulated surplus to the general operating fund. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? You will see the two invoices <coughs> there as well. Hearing none, all those in favor? It is carried. 10.3. Whereas the 2022 financial plan included $262,000 transfer to tax stabilization reserve as well as $510,000 transfer from accumulated surplus of which $262,000 was to fund the transfer to the reserve. Therefore, be it resolved that $262,000 be transferred from accumulated surplus to the general operating fund and $262,000 be transferred from the general operating fund to this tax stabilization reserve. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All those in favor? Is carried. Moving on to bylaws. Resolved that bylaw 18, 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, setting the rate of taxes for 2022, be read a second time. <coughs> by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion. Councillor what? Oh, sorry. Well, thank you. Sorry. No worries. All those in favor? It is carried. Resolved that the by that bylaw 18, 2022, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, setting the rate of taxes for 2022, be read a third time and passed. This is a recorded vote. Discussion. <coughs> Councillor Bobic. What is the percentage of the increase? The over, I can't even remember now. Four percent. CFO Ganita. Four point seven percent. Thank you, sir. So that includes uh, the loader and the fire truck and everything we just voted on? Not the fire truck, just the loader. Not the truck. Okay, okay thank you. The loader's on reserves. Yeah. Further discussion? Oh, I need a mover in a second. Oh, I haven't moved it. No. I have, sorry, my apologies. Moved by. Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> further, further discussion? 
All those in favor? All those not in favor? It is carried. And resolve that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public for item, or for an item, contaminated soil, contaminated soil. <coughs> and then I have two other items to add, which is a cemetery and a rise issue, <coughs> Councillor Delorier. I have, I have a question on uh, <coughs> shared service negotiation and I have a question on another agreement that we would have signed with an individual regarding a land sale. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Moved by <coughs> Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All those in favor? It is carried. We are now in camera. Resolved that this regular meeting of council now adjourn at 8.41 p.m. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morio. All those in favor? It is carried. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. <coughs>